Hybrid camera shootout time. Nikon ZF versus Panasonic S52X. In using the two of these, I was very surprised at how much snappier and faster the Nikon ZF was. It turns on right away. Uh, the autofocus seems a little more snappy, um, and it just seems smoother and easier to use. The S5 takes a second to turn on often. Um, the, the menus and the just the operation in general is a little bit clunkier, actually, especially in photo. The, uh, the S5 II has the best set of video features for sure. It's got shutter angle, uh, a waveform monitor that you can move around very easily. Um, just, you know, a, a real video powerhouse. However, the Nikon is really no slouch. It also has waveforms, although not quite as uh, good as these, like as customizable as, as the waveform box on this, uh, but it's got them. Um, doesn't have shutter angle. That's, that's what it definitely needs. Um, but, uh, you know, surprisingly robust video features on this as well. The one place, you know, usability wise where the S5 II has a definite advantage is the sort of ergonomics of the camera. It's got a, you know, a joystick, a dedicated focus, uh, uh, like autofocus, continuous, manual focus, single focus uh, dial, and then white balance, ISO, and exposure compensation are all right on the camera. I think that is so nice. It's got two dials, drive mode, and the pass and dial. Super customizable, more customizable than maybe any other camera on the market. So that's pretty impressive. But while the Nikon falls very short, no joystick again, very sad, very sad, no joystick. Um, while it does fall quite short in that department, the retro styling almost makes up for it. Um, the grip on this is a little bit better, but with the hand grip on this, it's about the same. They're both kind of heavy, honestly. I wish they were lighter. This has a full HDMI port. Annoyingly, this doesn't have a micro HDMI port. That sucks. Micro HDMI ports suck. <laughs> full HDMI is so much better. I think the power delivery is better on this guy. Uh, I used a dummy battery on it. That worked fine. I haven't tried it yet on this, but um, I think maybe the USB charging is different, but that's not something that I really am going to need. I'm mostly shooting short form stuff or, or stuff where, you know, you'd be plugged into the wall or have an extra battery bank. So that's not really an issue for me, um, but a consideration nonetheless. Lens selection. Uh, I think the Nikon is a slightly more robust set of lenses. Uh, Nikon makes beautiful lenses, but... Uh, the L-mount alliance is filling in nicely, and then you have Leica glass on the L-mount. Uh, there's also just the whole, I wish this was an L SL3 <laughs> factor to, for both these cameras, but especially this one, since this is L-mount alliance, it reminds me of all of its shortcomings in terms of build quality, the low quality EVF. The EVF's a little bit better on this, but not by much. Um, no, nowhere near an SL camera viewfinder. Um, Back screen on this is really good. It's not bad on here, but it's really good on this one. I'll throw up a few video and photo clips up here, just so you can kind of see. Um, you know, I actually think it's pretty comparable, and it might boil down to kind of just which colors you like. I kind of skew towards the Nikon colors, um, especially in video. Let me know what you think. Here we go. Real easy one. If you're photo first, but need a hybrid camera, 
pick the Nikon ZF. If you're video first but need a hybrid camera, consider the S52X. But if you like retro styling or you just like Nikon better, you might still want to go with the ZF. For me, I'm more photo first, and the ease of use, snappiness of use of this guy over this guy uh, has got me choosing the ZF easily. It turns on faster, it's just easier to use in general, plus it's photo forward, and it has sexy retro styling. So this one wins, this one's going to use Photo Pro. What do you think? Which one of these would you choose? Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.